What's happening out there, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, we're taking a look at the awesome power of Zapier and how it works. Now for this demonstration, we're gonna move some information. I'm gonna use a demonstration of Eventbrite. I've got an event set up right here, which I'm gonna log into. And what I wanna do is I wanna move the content of my information from Eventbrite over to ConvertKit, where it stores my email database. By default, these two silos of information, Eventbrite's great on its own, and ConvertKit, now Kurt, Kurt, Kit, is great on its own. And I wanna use Zapier to pull the information from Eventbrite and move it over to Kit. And we'll take a look how to do that right now. All right, so I am at zapier.com. Before I log in, I wanna explain how the pricing works just so you understand more about Zapier and how they price their tool. What they have here on the pricing guideline is a task. So what a task is, is essentially it says, okay, I've taken information from Eventbrite, where do I wanna send it out through Zapier? That's a task. So for example, sending information from Eventbrite to Kit is one task. Now if you wanna send information to somewhere else, like you wanna add it to a Google spreadsheet, that's a second task. So you kind of have to guesstimate how many tasks that you're gonna set up and use. So if you have a small run of information, you might only have 2,000 tasks per month, which is usually gonna be billed at $49. The little one down here is free. I recommend paying because you just get a lot more powerful tools. And not every app is available on the free platform. Some apps or connections, in trace, Eventbrite's an app and ConvertKit is an app, have to double check at what level your premium apps are at versus not premium apps. You might get away with the $0, but chances are probably good you're gonna go up to $49 in that respect. You can pay monthly or you can pay yearly. It's a ginormous fee savings at $33, which is really awesome. So again, if you have less than that, if you only have 750, so if you're starting out just from scratch, you can just pay $19 per month per year or $29 per month and see where you land on this level going on. And of course, with more tasks, then the cost increases and increases and increases and increases. So with that, let me log in and let's actually go into Eventbrite and Kit and pull some data. So I am logged into my Zapier account and what I wanna do is I wanna create a new Zap. In here, I've got a fresh, area to work with. Now, sometimes this Copilot works, sometimes it doesn't work. For me, this is a really simple zap, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this trigger. Start number one says select the event to start your zap. Since I wanna pull from Eventbrite, I'm gonna come in here and say Eventbrite. Pull this. I have to choose how this gets triggered. In this case, for this trigger event, I wanna say a new order. So when someone buys a ticket to my event, do something. I'm gonna select my account, and if you have multiple accounts, it'll ask you which one you wanna use. Now note, every time you have a new account set up, it might take you to an API key or a separate login. In my case, I've already logged into Eventbrite before, so it already comes up previously and says which account you wanna use, and I've chosen the one that I wanna use for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue and start the configuration process. From here, I'm gonna choose organization. I'm then gonna choose the event status of the project, and I'm gonna choose which event that I want to use. I then say continue. I'm gonna test this to see if it works. Awesome, it found a new record for this project. Now, a great part about Eventbrite is it'll give you dummy text to use in the event that you don't have any tickets sold. In this case, I have a dummy event that I'm using, which Eventbrite gave me dummy text. So if we scroll down here, if I just say name, let's type name properly, the name that is associated with this ticket is John Smith, and the email is johnsmith at example.com. Obviously, this doesn't exist, but I can use this to pull data into my kit slash convert kit email account. Sweet, we've pulled data from Eventbrite and it'll trigger this run when someone actually orders it. So that's great we have all this data, but now we have to move the data over to Kit, I would keep saying it, Kit slash ConvertKit down below. 
reason why I'm saying kit slash convert kit is kit changed their name formerly convert kit inside of Zapier. It still says convert kit. Now, again, they might change this tomorrow after I make this video, but do know that kit and convert kit are the same tool. They just went through a rebranding process and different tools are a little slow to catch up to the rebrand. So in the future, this video might look a little bit different when kit does officially change inside of Zapier. I'm going to click convert kit. And I have to find my account in convert kit and pull the data from number one to number two. This case, my event action is going to be either adding a subscriber to a form. If you have automation or in this case, I'm going to tag a subscriber. I'm just going to say that they are a purchase of a ticket. So I'll say add tag subscriber. What account do I want to use? I'm going to use my account. And from here, I'm going to say continue. And now what I get to do is I get to configure how the data populates in ConvertKit. Tag I'm going to use is I'm going to use in this case, I'm going to call it industry. This is an industry party that I have going on at my event bright action. The email we're going to pull is from number one. So in this case, the email I'm going to use is John Smith at example.com. The first name, I'm going to put in is John and the expiration date doesn't have it. This is something extra in a different field that I have for a different project, but this is, a, I can ignore this one. And what I want to do is then put the last name as Smith. I'm going to ignore the start date. Since again, this is for a different project. These are extra fields in convert kit. And again, I've set these up previously. You may or may not have this in your account. But what it's doing here is in Zapier, it's pulling data from Eventbrite and adding it to ConvertKit. If I say continue, I'm gonna test this step. And like magic, it sent the data from Zapier over to Kit. Let's take a look and double check to make sure that actually did go through. Sure enough, John Smith has been added to my subscriber list in Kit from the data that I pulled from Eventbrite. The last thing we have to do is officially publish this zap. I'm gonna say publish. It's gonna publish the zap to go live. This is now actually a working zap. Let me actually change this name at the very top to say demo Eventbrite to kit email. And now that this is running, anytime someone buys a ticket from Eventbrite, it's going to run automatically. Now, how do we know it's going to run? We can take a look at our Zap history. If we come back to our Zap here at the top little home icon, I can come to the Zap history and it's going to tell me if it's run or not run. It's also, in my case, I've got a Pro 750 plan. And so far this month, I've ran 128 tasks, not Zaps, but tasks in this case, out of 750. I average for me about 500 to 600, so the 750 plan works great. Again, the Zap history will tell you if your Zap ran, and it'll also email you if there's any issues or hiccups in the Zap. In case something doesn't publish correctly, it'll tell you, hey, there's an error. But this is the basics of how Zapier works, and if we go back to our Zap, go back here for one second before we finish up, you can add more than one element to this zap. So if I were to add another step to this, let's say I want to go into Google Docs. I'll just type Google, see if sheets come up. There it is. If I wanted to add a document into this, this would be two tasks now. This is how the pricing works. So if I were to send information to two locations, one I've sent it to ConvertKit, and two I've sent it now to Google Sheets in theory, what would happen is I'd be charged for two tasks. So in this case, this one entire zap would be two tasks. And then if we head back over here and our zap history and our plan, 750 goes down to half in theory because I've sent it two different places. That's how the pricing works with zap here. And you can add more and more zaps all the way through and continue on and continue on. And that's all about Zapier.